welcome to another video of material simplified well this is the second video of the most probable interview questions in material science series so what i've realized is that it becomes quite boring to watch a one hour video in a single stretch like the last one so what i've done is i have divided this series into n number of parts and now i'll be making short short videos say five questions at a time i'll be answering only five questions five most probable interview questions which can be asked in any material science interview be it mtech phd isro bars any kind of interviews so let's move towards our questionnaire part let's see the first question okay for a given material would you expect surface energy to be greater than same as or less than grain boundary energy well according to me surface energy will be greater than grain boundary energy if you look at grain boundaries some atoms on one side of a boundary will bond with some atoms on the other side but that is not the case when we take surface atoms thus if you look there will be a fewer number of unsatisfied bonds along a grain boundary as compared to surface atoms therefore surface energy will be greater than grain boundary energy moving to the next part okay next question is the grain boundary energy of a small angle grain boundary is less than for a high angle one why um small angle grain boundary energy is lower than an high angle grain boundary one because um in case of small angle grain boundaries more atoms will bond across the boundary for a small angle you know the angle is very less so the bonding probability gets higher but when the angle is more less number of atoms will be bonding with each other therefore in case of small angle grain boundaries there will be less number of unsatisfied bonds so uh, the small angle grain boundary energy will be lower on a lower side as compared to higher angle one uh, moving to the third one is it possible for three or more elements to form a solid solution well solid solution we define as when two elements combine together in solid form to produce a single solid phase that is what we define a solid solution so now what we have here is is it possible for three or more elements or say more more than two number of elements in that case well yes it is possible for three or more elements to form a solid solution see because only one element will act as a solvent and other elements will act as solutes as long as one has a homogeneous mixture of multiple elements one will always have a solution so that's not a problem so yes it is possible fourth question so how do you compare substitutional solid solutions and interstitial solid solutions well in case of substitutional solid solutions we usually have similar atomic radii atoms replacing each other if you compare the host atoms and the substituting atoms their atomic radii percentage is not much difference there is a means a variation of around 15% is allowable for complete solid solubility and in sub, because of this because of this substitution or the same number of atomic radii according to human roth rule complete solid solubility is possible so if your atomic radius are almost similar in that case once there is a substitution the newer atoms will not produce any lattice strains because they are of almost same size when we compare interstitial solid solutions mostly the atoms will have a size difference and interstitial atoms will usually be on a larger side means till the their size will be greater than the interstitial voids present in that case if a larger size atoms comes and try to sit in the voids in that case there will be lattice strains and because of these lattice strains there will be distortions which also results in limited solubility so yeah this in this way you can compare between substitutional solid solutions and inter interstitial solid solutions the basic difference again lies the same between the movement in one case in substitutional case you are actually substituting host atoms whereas in interstitial solid solutions the 
atoms will come and occupy the interstitial voids moving to the fifth question the surface energy decreases with increase in planar density yes or no and why okay well the surface energy indeed decreases with increase in planar density that's a yes why it is a yes well because increased planar density ensures that atom along the surface form more number of bonds with neighboring atoms that is because of increased planar density atoms will get closer so once they are closer they'll try to form more number of bonds as the number of bonds formed are increasing therefore the surface energy decreases uh, those were five most probable interview questions for you guys stay tuned for more videos i'll be updating this i'll be continuously finding questions and trying to answer them stay tuned happy learning guys take care